welcome back everybody. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome day, enjoying the weekend, and uh, staying safe. So we're going to be feeding just a couple of boas, which I think you guys will appreciate that. And you guys will enjoy seeing some of the IMG and the VPI boas um, eating and growing up. They're doing very well. Uh, some of them are moving up a little bit on the food. And then we are going to be trying to feed this new male uh, green anaconda. He ate last week for the breeder. I got him Wednesday and uh, really haven't really tried to mess with around with him too much in the last couple days. But I did hold him yesterday and pretty good interaction with him. He did swing at me uh, closed mouth so he didn't really try to bite me. I think he was just a little bit nervous or scared. But um, a lot of work and a lot of patience will go into this snake. I was told he ate, the last meal was a I believe it was a live wrap up, so I'm gonna try that again. So if you guys don't like live, I do apologize. Sometimes um, we have to feed what the snake chooses to eat and not what we want them to eat. And this is not gonna be some crazy feeding where it's just showing you guys like, just to show them eat alive because there's a lot of people that do make videos on just live feedings just for the glorification of that and uh, I don't like to do that because I do like the rats, I do like the mice and I really don't enjoy seeing other animals get killed but maybe this could be educational for you guys since a lot of people have asked me, not a lot, not a lot of people actually own anacondas but quite a few people have asked me you know how do you get an anaconda to eat as a baby they love quail, they love live quail, frozen thaw quail, birds, uh, which is what this one was eating for quite a while. Uh, so I really don't know, and I'm not expecting it to even eat this rat. Rat pups are small enough that uh, you can leave them in the cage and not have any issues with them. So let's go ahead and just feed some of these bigger ones. The IMG, Motley, Hypo, Jungle, and 100% Head for Snow, this lady, shed out and I do need to swap her over to bedding but this girl is gorgeous I don't know why the lighting in here is not that great so just take a quick peek at her amazing color she darkened up a little bit her tail is getting a little bit darker and it looks like she kind of lost a little bit of blackness uh, pigment on her head, which is a little weird on that shed, but sometimes uh, they grow back and stuff like that. So not too many meals. This girl is on uh, rat pups. So we moved her up. After, I do like to feed them for the first year uh, mice. And then after the first year, I try to get them on rats. So I did make a mistake and I did feed. Um, one of my snakes and she does need water so I just filled hers up with the bedding and then she'll be on a mouse as well she's doing very well on mice and I actually moved lumped her size up from much smaller mouse than that to about, about this size and if I don't really mess around with her for about three days then I haven't noticed any problems with regurgitation so we're gonna keep her on that schedule right there so the VPI Aztec will eat a mouse as well. And soon enough, these ones could probably eat uh, rats. And we'll go to the VPI Motley, who is changing colors very slowly. They can Sometimes they can go jet black within a couple of months and I've seen that some of them, some IMGs take quite a while. So very nice strike. And I'm, I'm very excited to see this male right here uh, grow up and then we'll feed. So this VPI IMG, this girl is very large. She's a 2021 and I do believe she could eat a wrap up with no issues. Uh, so we're just going to try that. So she was fed very, very well as a baby before I had her. And you can see that she's even bigger than some of my 2020s. 
So this girl will be very large, uh, which is very exciting because she might be a breeder later on in her life. So let's take a look at this dude right here. Like I said, I'm not expecting anything to happen. This has to be probably one of the darkest anacondas that I have ever seen in my entire life. So my other ones, there's one right there and I'm cleaning her water out. Oh great, fell in the water. So we'll just see what happens. So I don't know if he's in shed, if he's that dark because he's in shed. Both of my other anacondas have very bright eye bands and this one does not. So the eyes are very dark. Uh, there's is a little bit of some, uh, it looks like there's something on, on the scales right there, but we'll see what happens. And he does have a hide. He has his water. A lot of anacondas um, really do enjoy small enclosures, like really every other snake. And I know people say that it's horrible to put snakes in these, but we need to take our human emotions out of that. And we need to concentrate on what's actually the best for the snakes. So them being in these small areas, they feel more secure. They feel uh, better in them. They're easier to, uh, um, deal with the humidity and the heats. And if there are issues with the snake, you can easily see what is going on. So right now this little wrap pup is just kind of trying to hang out in the corner. Like I said, I am not expecting this guy to eat at all. And I, and I might have to even leave this in there overnight with the lights off to see what happens. If it doesn't eat it, um, I'm going to have to find somebody local that has quail in this time of year. Well, right now is probably not the easiest time. Uh, going into the springtime, I think is a lot, is a better option when people are actually hatching, uh, the quail and, uh, birds and stuff like that. The rodent pro should have frozen thawed or frozen, uh, quail. I heard they do eat fish like you can just go to supermarket and get the frozen fish thaw it out and try it but um you know it's it, it's still a new environment for him so we we have to see and be patient with him so if it tags it and wraps it up i'll check back but we don't need to see just a mouse hanging out in there uh, not doing very much so these ones are still kind of trying to to eat so this is a 2000 and 20 and not much smaller than the 2021 still need to feed the moon glow back here which this girl is growing and looking gorgeous change your colors are changing and i'm going to feed them on the next set so i really every week I, I basically feed them and then we have the the snow right here which is this guy's this male is looking phenomenal. So it's kind of tough to tell when these ones are in shed because of the albinoism. Um, you just kind of have to look for the faded colors and then the glossy eyes. So this one could be in shed, but I'm gonna try to feed him anyways. So I do have to feed all of the snakes in here, anaconda, the snakes over there, and of course all of the ball pythons over here. So have about 30 snakes to feed after this. So we're not doing all of that right now. So. I don't really think anything's going to come of this, but you know, it, it's the same thing that happened with my two other anacondas. They take forever to try to eat. Um, it takes, I mean, it, it's definitely a challenge and you have to be patient. It takes weeks for them to want to eat or months for them to want to eat when they want to, but they can go off of food for a very long time and be, and do very well. See how she's kind of right there, how it's kind of wrinkly? I'm wondering if she's in shed. And she went in shed before she was shipped to me. Uh, and then, so it could be another reason why she's not, or sorry, he. I keep saying she because I have so many females and my other two are females. But you can tell he is very fat. So he is not, you know, missing a meal for a week or two is not going to harm him at all. So... Okay, so 
I'm not really sure what's going on right here. I don't know if that was a defensive strike or a feeding strike. And I really don't want this to be any more brutal than it has to be because it's like barely biting on. So, I'd say that was a defensive strike. Um, <laughs> that would definitely be, and the one thing is though about this guy is he's clearly very defensive about his head being touched. So he's not very, okay, there we go. So we got the strike. I do apologize about that, that noise. I, I don't, I don't like when these dudes are just, just in case we'll hold the mouth. Um, but that's really it guys. So a little brutal, um, but nothing too crazy, nothing too bad. I thought it was just going to be a defensive bite because of how, I, how he bit the rat. And I know that, um, after, after yesterday trying to hold him and even a video from Sam, which I think it was him, um, touching around the neck and the face of, of the anaconda. He's very temperamental. So it's something that I'm going to have to definitely work with. I think I'm going to get gloves and really start to, you know, touching his face around his mouth just so there's no complications or issues as he gets older. And I think that's a really good, uh, area to, to, for them to calm down with. And, and both anacondas over here, um, I, I, would not worry at all about either one of them biting me. You know, if, if they go, if they start going through my fingers or if I want to grab them by the head or the neck, obviously gently, but, uh, he is definitely going to be a project and hopefully you guys will stick around and want to be around, uh, for that. So that, that's what's going on. So the rat was in here for maybe 20 minutes and, uh, you know, just kind of like not really doing much, just kind of over here and, and stuff like that. But right, right when I put it in front of me, but this is amazing because, and I know I'm rambling right now, but it's amazing that it, it's eat or it, it, I don't know if it's going to eat it, but it struck it. it All right, that is it. I'll let you guys know in an update if the male actually eats it. Right now it's still wrapped, so I really don't know what's going to happen with it. But uh, again, thank you guys for the support. Hopefully you guys have an awesome weekend. I'll see you guys on the next video.